Hello, and welcome to the Super Data Science YouTube channel. Today we're going to be looking at the LApply function. Now, LApply applies a function normally to a list or a vector, and it returns a list of the same length. The function it applies can be anything from a simple mean, or square brackets, or a more complicated user-defined function. Today we're going to do three different examples. We're going to do some simple means, we're going to show you the square brackets, and we're also going to see how we can load a bunch of different CSV files from the same location. Our data set is going to be the IRIS data set, which is one of the pre-loaded data sets in R. So if we have a look at the data set, we can see that we've got four numeric variables and one factor variable. So the first thing we're going to do is calculate the mean of each of these four numeric variables. So we use the LApply function, and then we put in what we want to apply this across. So the data set we want to apply the function across is the first four columns of data. And the function we want to apply is mean. So if we run that, we see we get the mean of each of these four variables. Now let's do a user-defined function. And we'll do a user-defined version of range. So L apply. Again, we want to do this across the first four columns. But this time, we're going to define our own function. So fun equals function of x. And we want the max of x. Subtract the min of x. Now this gives us our range for each of our four, four variables. Now we're going to do an example where we use the square bracket function. But to do this, we're going to create a new, a new object, which is set a list. So we'll use the orange data set, which is another predefined data set in R. We'll use the split function to split the orange data set and create our list. And we're going to split that data set by tree. So now, if we have a look at orange list, we have a, a list which has five elements, and each of those elements is a different tree. And then we have the age and the circumference of that tree at different times. Now we're going to try and pull out different rows and columns using the LApply function. So if we use LApply, and we want to apply this to the orange list, and our function this time is going to be square bracket. Now we only need to put in one of the square brackets because R is smart enough to know that we mean both. So if we now type one, that means we're going to pull the first row from each element of the list, comma blank, because we want to pull all the columns. So if we run that, we can see that we get the first row of each of those elements of the list. Now if we want to get the third column, we use a very similar syntax. We use L apply to the orange list. Again, we'll use the square bracket, but this time we do comma, comma, because we want all rows, and then three, because we want the third column. So now we get the third column, which is the circumference for each element in that list. And we can go one step further and pull out an individual element from each of those elements in the list. So if we go two, three, we will now get the second row and third column from each element of the list. So it's just one number. Now a more complicated function we can do is to read in all the files from one folder on your computer. Now this is a really useful thing to do when you've got lots of files in the same format and you want to bind them together into one data frame. So first of all, we're going to set our working drive. Now this is where all the data sets are stored. Then we're going to use our LApply function to create a list of CSVs. So we'll have CSV list equals directory. Now this will tell us all of the files that are in that directory. We can see there are five. Now we're going to use LApply to read those in. 
So we'll define files equals l apply, and we want to apply that to the CSV list, and we want to read them in. So read CSV. And then to combine those together to a new data set, we'll call data2, we use do.call, and we're going to rbind our files. So if we run that, we can now see that we've got a new data frame which has got those five files are binded together. I hope this video has been really useful. If it has, please remember to like and share it and subscribe to the channel.